and we could do it as a short talk evening. Uh, it's uh, up to you. Do you want me to keep going or do you want us to uh, keep, going. keep going? All right, okay. Well, as I said uh, you know, fairly recently, and uh, my apologies because uh, I did that in a uh, special uh, Viking type script, but it, uh, it wasn't readable by uh, Andrew's machine. But um, there was what was called the Viking Kingdom of Jorvik uh, from 1866 to 1864. And as a very quick bit, they called it the Viking Century, except it wasn't quite a century. You had a series of attacks, but they were only on the coast in the late 700s. But in 866, they invaded and then came to Yorkshire. And the Vikings didn't like staying in one place very long. So they captured York and then set off and headed for Newcastle. And so the Saxons took York again. So they had to come back again and retake York. And then off they went again to uh, start conquering other parts of uh, uh, of England, and then they finally came back in 876 and decided they quite liked it round here and stayed. And so from 876 to 954, there was what is called the Viking century, and it didn't quite make sense to me because when everybody talks about Pocklington's history, it's all about the Saxons. <coughs> Pocklington is named after Pokella, the uh, Saxon leader. You had um, uh, Paulinus come in and converting all the Saxon people and baptising them in the beck. And there was all this stuff. And yet nothing seemed to ever come out about the Vikings. But... All the villages around Pocklington mm -hmm. have Viking suffixes. Yep. Anything with a by or a thorpe or a home uh, is all named after Vikings. And so, again, I couldn't quite make sense that how do they have so much influence and yet nobody ever knows anything about them. And, not only that, when I looked in the Doomsday Book, it, it obviously the influence had carried on a long time because you've got all these uh, guys with Viking names, Bjorn Wolf at Burnby, are uh, all still around here a uh, hundred years later. And the example I've pulled out is Grimthorpe and Oosthorpe, where there were a series of Grimmer, Jan Wolf, Thorold Wolf, and this is about in about... Uh, 1100, the guy who lived at Grimthorpe was called, called Fawn Sigulfson. Well, he didn't sound very English, did he? <laughs> and, and so, like I say, I'm still trying to, uh, struggling with it. Many, many years ago, I bought this book called The Viking Century in East Yorkshire. There's an excellent uh, bit about the Numburnum Cross which has one of the best uh, pictures in the country of a, um, a Viking warrior with his sword, but nothing in there about Pocklington. And even in the town itself. Gate is a Viking word. Just about every street in Pocklington was had a, a Viking suffix on it as well. I mean, a few of these now. The Victorians like things to be nice and uh, sanitised, so they changed Pudding Gate into Pavement and uh, and various other. But Hungate, we're in. We are now in Hungate, which was the Viking street where they kept the hounds, but uh, they changed that into Great George Street. So. All the names in Pocklington are Viking, and all the villages around were. And so that, like I say, didn't make sense. Even the uh, landscape roundabout, Beck is a Viking word, 
and so the one at that side of Pofflinton was Corkeld Beck, Pofflinton right through the middle of it. Over the road there was the Kirklands and Kirk's a Viking word and all of these uh, coming emanating out from the town, all Viking, no, uh, no connection. But I then read about this book called The, Great, the Viking Great Army which is written by two professors at York University. And just as the archaeologists have suddenly, literally, dug an Iron Age Celtic history out of the ground as they've been doing their excavations before Pocklington housing estates were built, so suddenly a Viking history of this area has come out the ground not via archaeologists, but by metal detectors. And what has happened is Don Hadley and Julian Richards from York University had started studying all the collections of metal detectors and have started piecing together a local history of the Vikings in this area. And we knew that they... Uh, settled at Topsy for the winter in 865 and then went on um, cap in the spring and captured York. But what they've identified is clusters of finds all around, including at Pocklington and Yapham and Stamford Bridge, and they can tell by the type of artefacts that they found that people stayed there for significant amounts of time, including chess pieces and all sorts of different artefacts, and have put together a map of all the places where the whole army wasn't based at Pocklington, but the Viking Great Army is reckoned to have been about 5,000 men. And so what you have to do is break off into groups, because if 5,000 people are in one place, they're going to eat you out of house and home. And so they split off into foraging parties and into smaller groups for winter camps. And, and so Pocklington is right in the middle of all of that. So I thought I would try and do a very brief uh, taster of what Pocklington and the Vikings are about. And I picked three iconic Viking simple symbols, the uh, bearded axe, Thor and his hammer, and a raven banner. The raven was the uh, banner that they used on their ship sails and on their uh, flags as they went into battle. And I thought, right, okay, I'll have a look and see what we've got pertaining to those in Pocklington. And Andrew has uh, collected axes for some considerable time and uh, that is an axe that he bought, it's called as you can see a bearded axe or a skegox if that's how you pronounce it and that's from Fangfoss and uh, that's Andrew when he dresses up uh, as his uh, Viking reenactor uh, at uh, Erdu, that is Andrew and what you've got here is a Thor's hammer that was on, uh, found on the airfield in the 1950s. And I was a bit sceptical about that. It looked fairly modern to me. So I thought, well, is it, is it something that's just been discarded? And, uh, oops, no, sorry, I need to go... Yeah. This might not have worked with the technology here. There we go. My uh, son did that for me. Like I say, I wasn't particularly convinced that this was a genuine artefact from Pocklington. Looked a bit too modern. But then when I was looking through doing this, I came across this, which is in the National Museum of Denmark. And so that has got provenance. And if you look, it's virtually identical. All the different uh, patterns on this one that was sold on eBay 
uh, in 2006 is just the same pattern in this uh, one in the uh, National Museum that was found in the, on an island in the middle of the Baltic. And ravens. In Pocklington, uh, a decade or so ago, they found a Anlaf Guthrithan silver penny. Uh, the Vikings didn't really use currency very much, and this is right at the end of that Viking period. Um, Anlaf was the king of Dublin, and then uh, he retook York as well. And that's you know, an iconic, again, figure of a Viking ra raven found on a coin that was in Pocklington. Loads more now, dozens and dozens of, uh, of Viking artefacts have uh, come to the fore. And there's a chapter in here that says, From Raiders to Traders. And this is a gilt piece a uh, broken piece that was found by metal detectors at Pocklington and Andrew and I have been consulting with a Viking expert and he put the, it together to say this is what it would look like and what he reckons is it was the bracket or class of a very, very upmarket religious book and that what he said is that this will just you know, the Vikings didn't do books, uh, they didn't have a written history. They'll just have liked the look of that being a, uh, a fancy shiny piece and they just have ripped it off and broken it and kept it and then used the book to make a fire with. Uh, that came from Pocklington and we often hear about deserted medieval villages and a lots of people say, well, they uh, died out because of the Black Death. A lot more disappeared because landlords got rid of all the people because they wanted to put sheep on the land rather than people. But even more disappeared because in that Viking century, which actually only lasted 90 years, they, it's reckoned that the Vikings just wiped villages out. Uh, what they did was either kill the men or in a lot of cases took them into slavery sent them to the Middle East and swapped them for silver because they like silver uh, ingots and you know, we have a very unique language which has lots of uh, mixtures of both Viking words and uh, Anglo-Saxon words and one of the theories is that what the Vikings did was kill the men and married the women. And so their sons grew up with a father who spoke Norse and a mother who spoke Anglo-Saxon, which are similar but different. And that's how our language became this mix. Uh, and so in 876, the... Uh, King Halfdan told his men to say right you can now go out and settle and help yourself so they uh, got rid of uh, all the Saxons that were about and uh, established their own settlement which makes total sense to me as to why we've got all these by and hams around Pocklington because they reckoned that they particularly targeted royal estates because they were already the most productive and uh, most profitable farming estates and Pocklington was a royal Saxon estate so it made perfect sense that this is one of the places that they target. And so in 876 they're still uh, pillaging and murdering but then quite rapidly went on to uh, start uh, trading and that should say uh, to tra raiders to traders and this is the bit that Andrew showed it's called a trial piece but what our expert has told us it's a piece of carved bone that was found in Pocklington and 
a trial piece means it sounds like a, some scout I mean, whittling a piece of uh, wood or something but what he said is that this will have been carved and made into a mould with a piece of wax and then used uh, to start uh, em- embellishing things like strap ends which was the bit that they put on the end of belts and, and thongs and shoelaces and things. So this is an example of where they're starting to uh, manufacture and trade with stuff. And what we're told is this is exceedingly rare. Uh, no one has ever found one in a rural setting before. The only place they've found uh, trial pieces is in cities like York and Dublin. And also, if you look at this strap end, which has been manufactured from a mould, there's these funny little dots and circles on the end. And these are all from Pocklington. You don't usually associate this as Saxon-type design, but this is early Saxon design, and the majority of pieces that have been identified from Pocklington as Viking have got these uh, quite simple ring and dot designs on them. And here's a strap end from Pocklington with that design, and that's the same from uh, the collection of the York Archaeological Trust, and that's from Dublin, because what you had with the Vikings was they had a kingdom based around Dublin, and then one based on York, and then the next one uh, in Scandinavia. And so that's a taster. What we can do is get a Viking uh, expert in to do a proper talk sometime. But like I say, it uh, suddenly reading this book uh, solved my dilemma about why there was nothing about uh, the Vikings in Pocklington, and so I thought it was worth uh, you know, telling the story to you as well. Thank you.